Hi, today we have with us Dr. Krishnamon Parattu. He has done his PhD in theoretical physics from Ayuka Pune. Then he joined Perimeter Institute for a visiting postdoctoral position, and presently he is in IIT Madras. So welcome, Krishna. Thank you, Shantanu. So in India there is a common trend. After class twelve, people generally go for engineering or medical. But you choose physics. So why do you choose physics? Well, I do not have much interest in engineering. Medicine did seem a little bit more interesting. But I was more interested in maths. I chose physics because then you can do maths as well as physics seemed a little bit more glamorous. So after your BSc, you joined IIT Bombay. So is that the time when you decided that you are going to work in theoretical physics? No, it was much earlier. I decided to do theoretical physics just after 10th standard. Okay, so then you did your PhD in theoretical physics, mostly on alternate models of gravity. Not really alternate models. My PhD was mainly on some structural aspects of Einstein's theory of general relativity. So that is very standard. So what are you working on currently? I mean, what is your current research project? I'm working on some alternate theory to the Big Bang theory. These theories are known as bouncing models. So these are models where you assume that the universe did not start at the Big Bang, but there was a universe before that which collapsed and then bounced back to give our universe. Interestingly, bouncing models do not require this process of inflation. Wow, so when I was in school, I was also interested in knowing how this universe is created and all these Big Bang models, etc. And uh, I used to read different popular science books, etc. So can you please explain what is this Big Bang model? So. If we look out into the universe, we can see hundreds of billions of galaxies. Astronomers have discovered that these galaxies are moving away from each other. So if you go back in time, they were closer and closer together. And long time back in the past, all these galaxies were squashed together on top of each other to form a point of infinite density. Scientists believe that this point of infinite density somehow exploded to create our universe and everything that is in it. They believe that this was the beginning of the universe and there was nothing before that. This initial explosion is known as the Big Bang and this theory is known as the Big Bang theory. Okay, but you told that you are working some alternate model, some bouncing model. So what is this bouncing model and how is it different from this standard Big Bang model? As I just said, in the Big Bang model, the universe started from this point of infinite density. But some scientists, they believe in another story. They believe that there was a universe before, it somehow collapsed, crushed all its matter to, and then reached a minimum size from which it bounced back, the big bounce, to create our universe. This bounce could have happened due to various reasons. One possibility is that it was caused by quantum gravitational effects. Okay, but uh, from our school days we read that universe started from some big bang, but you are saying that that model may not be correct. So why do you need this alternate model? So in this alternate story, two problems are solved. First, Big Bang theory does not allow us to ask what happened before the Big Bang or how the Big Bang happened. It just seems to miraculously happen. On the other hand, in the bouncing universe model, we do talk about what happened before the Big Bang point, which is now the big bounce. We do have equations of how the universe went towards the bounce and then bounced back to give the new universe. So that problem is not there in the bouncing models. Secondly, in bouncing models, we do not have to talk about a point of infinite density. As physicists, we do not like infinities. Well, if you give me infinite funding, sure, I'll take it. But no infinities in my equations, please. Also, bouncing models do not require inflation, as I've stated before. Great. I also heard about this cosmological inflation, but uh, I exactly don't know what is this thing. So can you please explain what is this cosmological inflation? According to the standard cosmological model, just after the Big Bang, the universe went through a phase of highly accelerated expansion, a lot of stressing, and tiny parts of the universe were blown up to really, really huge sizes. This process of accelerated expansion is known as inflation. Hmm, but uh, why do you need inflation? Actually, the standard Big Bang model cannot explain some of the features of our observed universe. For example, it cannot explain why the universe appears to be so uniform. Uh, so can you please explain in little more detail? Sure. I will explain with the example of the CMB. You see, so just after the Big Bang, the universe was very, very hot. And after some time, a lot of light was emitted. You can still detect this light around as, as the microwave background radiation. 
Scientists call this the cosmic microwave background or CMB. Now, the point is, if you look at the CMB with your telescope, pointing it in one direction or pointing it in another direction, it always appears to have the same temperature. Now, generally if you have a system whose different parts have the same temperature, then this means that these different parts exchange heat somehow and reach the same temperature. But this expression doesn't work so smoothly in our case because suppose you take one patch of the sky, say in the north of the sky and another part of the sky, which is say in the east and then calculate, then you can see that these parts were so far apart during the time from the Big Bang to the emission of the CMB that they could not have exchanged even light, which is the fastest signal that we know of. So if they could not have exchanged light, then there is no way that they could have exchanged heat and reached the same temperature. So then it would seem that these different parts somehow independently develop the same temperature. That would seem like too much of a coincidence, unless we can propose a mechanism as to how the same temperature would develop independently in different parts of the sky. Now inflation solves this problem as follows. So we assume that these different parts of the sky which appear so far apart were actually very very close together in early universe before inflation happened. So they were close together and they had time to exchange heat and reach the same temperature. Then inflation happened and these parts were then flung to different parts of the sky where by the space of accelerated expansion. So with inflation and big bang this problem is solved. Okay, so what are you telling is that the standard Big Bang model without inflation is complete nonsense and it cannot explain anything. But uh, in some of your bouncing model, you don't need inflation. So can you please explain why is that? No, I never said that the Big Bang model is complete nonsense. It can explain many things. For example, it can explain why we see the cosmic microwave background radiation around us. I'm just saying that it's not complete and has flaws, of which I have stated one, namely that the uniformity of the CMB temperature is not explained in the standard Big Bang model. Now, coming to your question about why bouncing models do not require inflation, you see, in bouncing models, the universe did not start at the time of the Big Bang, which is in this case the Big Bounce, but existed before that. So there would be lots of time for the different parts of the sky to exchange heat and reach the same temperature. So in that case, you do not need inflation. Okay, so what are you telling is that the standard Big Bang model has many issues and so you are working in some non-standard models. Yes, that is correct. Awesome, so now I have some rapid fire questions for you. Are you ready? Sure, bring it on. Newton or Einstein? Einstein. Chandrasekhar or Nalikar? Uh, Nalikar. Ayuka or Perimeter? Perimeter. Just because in Perimeter there are lots more topics that are dealt with. Ayuka is mainly concerned with just astrophysics and cosmology. Physics or mass? Physics. General relativity or Machian gravity? Machian gravity is conceptually very appealing, but till some experimental proof comes for Machian gravity, I would say general relativity. Uh, cosmological constant expression for dark energy or some actual physics for dark energy? Data till now is consistent with the cosmological constant. So applying Occam's razor, I would say cosmological constant. Okay, so, so now it's my turn. I also have some rapid fire questions for you. So your rapid fire questions are as follows. Gravity or electromagnetism? Gravity. Dirac or Feynman? Of course Feynman means maybe both are equally talented but I like that character. Okay. Quantum field theory or string theory? Uh, quantum field theory. Alright, very good. Excellent. Next question. Ayuka or Fermilab? Fermilab. Food is really good here. Otherwise, both are similar. Okay. Experiment or theory? Theory. Coding or calculations? Calculations. I don't like coding. Means coding is a boring job and anybody can do that. Really? Can anyone do that? Next question. Particle physics explanation for dark matter or Machian gravity explanation for dark matter? Machian gravity explanation for dark matter. The main problem of general relativity is that it cannot explain max principle. And if you consider max principle, then you will automatically get a dark matter and dark energy. You don't have to put dark matter and dark energy separately in your equation. Okay. Okay, so thanks Krishna for joining me in this show. Thanks for inviting me into the show. It was a pleasure. Thanks. At the Madras. So welcome Krishna. Thank you Shantanu. So in India there is a common trend. After class 12 people generally go for engineering or medical. But you choose physics. So why do you choose physics? Well, I do not have much interest in engineering. Medicine did seem a little bit more interesting. 
but I was more interested in maths. I chose physics because then you can do maths as well as physics seemed a little bit more glamorous. So after your BSc you joined IIT Bombay. So is that the time when you decided that you are going to work in theoretical physics? No, it was much earlier. I decided to do theoretical physics just after 10th standard. Okay, so then you did your PhD in theory. Dr. Krishnamon Parattu, he has done his PhD in Theoretical Physics from Ayuka, Pune. Then he joined Perimeter Institute for a visiting postdoctoral position and presently he is in 